Coming up on today's Alabama football report, some injury news led by Jace McClellan. The latest on a potential Evan Stewart transfer, although the portal not quite fully open yet. We'll break down what's going on there. Some players beginning to enter. Tommy Reese to Indiana rumors. Those are out there. And some brief discussion on the SEC championship game. It was a wild Iron Bowl this year. I don't know how the Iron Bowl always gets like the greatest finish ever, like every four years, every five years. It's insane how that continues to happen. This one at least came out on top for Alabama. Why Auburn rushed two, I will never know. But if you liked the win against Auburn, or at least the final couple seconds of the game against Auburn, and maybe not how they got there, then like today's video right now. That was a win that kept Alabama's college football playoff hopes alive. Like that video right now if you enjoyed the win over Auburn. Let's begin with the Jace McClellan injury. He was seen in a boot after the Bama Iron Bowl win against Auburn. Nick Saban is currently calling him day-to-day, -day, which tells me absolutely nothing uh, because day-to-day -day means absolutely nothing uh, for injury relates as it is for college. There's no injury reports. We don't really know. Here's what Nick Saban had to say. Quote, he said a little foot injury all year long. He tweaked it in the game. Uh, he'll be day to day this week. I can't tell you how much progress he'll make. Probably in the next 48 hours or so will tell us whether he'll make the kind of progress he needs to be able to practice some and play in the game. Maybe we'll get some insight from some of those photos that get sent out. If you see Jason McClellan out there, probably means he'll be able to play. Should know more later in the week, maybe on Wednesday, somewhere in that range. Certainly worth monitoring since McClellan has been the number one back for Alabama this year. So pick a lead back for me against Georgia in the SEC championship game. Two for Jace McClellan, five for Roy Dell Williams, or 26 for the new-ish entry, Jam Miller. This will be today's pinned comment. So if the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Two, five, or 26. Let's check in on the latest. We're kind of reading some tea leaves here, which is what makes college football off-seasons fun. Evan Stewart to Alabama. We mentioned these rumors last week when there was a report out of Texas. Texas is on three uh, insiders said Stewart was going to hit the transfer portal. Alabama was viewed as the favorite. Well, then it just so happened that after that bonkers Isaiah Bond touchdown catch from Jalen Milrow, Evan Stewart just so happened to share the Alabama football Instagram post about it. Now, timeline-wise, I'd say there's a decent chance Stewart knows Bond, at least met some camps or whatever. But, man, you're, sh you're sharing that? Again, we're, we are reading the tea leaves there. That makes me go, hmm, I wonder if Stewart does plan on transferring to Alabama since, in theory, he'd be replacing uh, you know, Jermaine Burton as one of your top outside threats and still probably go off to the NFL. Top teams then for Stewart. This is the initial four that had been mentioned by the Texas on three insiders. Alabama was number one. OSU is number two. Texas, or not is number two, but they're second on this list of four. Bama was the favorite of the other three teams in the mix. OSU, Texas, and Oregon. So very much a who's who for the former five-star recruit to, again, has had an interesting career at a and I I don't know if, if Mike Elko is going to be enough to really justify him saying, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick around here. Uh, he, again, he did not travel to the game against LSU. Chose to stay home. Uh, I thought that, that, that that's normally a pretty good indication. Yeah, man, he's not going to turn pro. Or he's, he's not, he's not going to come back to the Aggies. So I do think Evan Stewart is going to end up in the portal. And I do think then, based on the initial insider reporting, which I have no reason to doubt them since they're right about the whole uh, not traveling thing, and given that these shared Alabama Instagram posts kind of makes me feel like he's going to end up transferring. And I think Bama then would be viewed as the favorite, knowing, if we're being honest, you'll probably lose a player or two in the portal as well, at wide receiver. That's how it goes in college football. It's free agency, and that's, that's how it's going to be. So will Bama land Evan Stewart in the transfer portal? Y for yes, N for no. Sound off for me in the comment section right now. Coming up next, we will take a look at the rumors around Tommy Reese going to Indiana. The Athletics' Bruce Feldman does a pretty good job of laying out the top candidates for each job, and not often he misses someone altogether on that front. He has links 
Reese as a candidate for Indiana, given his ties. I think that does make some sense right there with Tom Allen now being fired by the Hoosiers. We'll break that down momentarily, but first, today's show is made possible by Prize Picks. Head over to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Here's why I am, I'm all aboard the Prize Picks hype train. It's just you against the numbers. You're not battling thousands of other players and pros and sharks. You pick two to six player stat projections, more than, less than, come out on top. The mix and match sports is awesome. Reboot policies, basically injury insurance. But I love the flex play more than anything. I fit seven of my last eight three-player pro projections because the, of the flex play. Five of them have been flex play related. So it's, it's saving me and, and getting me a, a bunch of money there. And boy, did it come down to the wire. Uh, Jake Browning had, this is from, from our Sunday slate, nine rushing yards. Okay, that stunk. Trent Irwin had 25 on one catch. One catch for Trenton Irwin. And Patrick Mahomes had 12 passing yards in like the first quarter and then finished up over uh, almost 300. So got two out of three right, came out on top again on prize picks. And you can too. It's really not that hard, folks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Link will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Let's check in on the Tommy Reese coaching history since he's now been linked to Indiana. It makes sense, right? He was the Northwestern GA, uh, a brief time as the Chargers assistant, then multiple years at Notre Dame, so you're not that far away. Now the Bama offensive coordinator. I think he's improved over the course of the season in 2023. It did not look very good to start. It just didn't seem to be working very well. There was plenty of frustration, but the offense has involved. They've gotten Jalen Milrow more involved as a runner. They've been able to hit some big-time deep shots with Milrow as a quarterback. I like a lot of what this offense has become. Testament to Saban, testament to Reese, and the players as well. So what is your confidence level in Tommy Reese as the Bama offensive coordinator? Scale it for me from 1 to 10. 1 on the low end, 10 on the high end. And we'll see. I, I, you're not going to fire him. It's a matter of does a team like Indiana want to make him their head coach? I think the timing might not quite be right, but sound off about the confidence level for Reese right now. I do want to briefly discuss the SEC championship. A full preview will be available on the channel later this week. So again, make sure you are subscribed, please, and thank you. George is only a five-point favorite. Seems like a low line, right? Remember, Nick Saban is 4-1 and one all time against Kirby Smart. The lone loss coming in the national championship game a few years ago. I think we've seen that this Georgia team is beatable. Now, you need to play well. You can't believe you did against Auburn and win. So that's not going to happen. They're not going to rush two and allow you to hit a 31-yard seven-second pass again. Bama must win this game for a chance at the college football playoff. It would be the best win of any team in college football this year. You still might need some help somewhere, whether it's Oregon beating Washington or maybe it's Texas losing is the easiest path right there. You still might need some help. But Saban has had great success against Georgia in SEC championships games. 2012, Bama won 32-28, a Low, uh, a close affair. Similar-ish score in 2018, actually. 35-28. to 28. Then in 2021, Bama run, won in a runaway football game, 41-24. to 24. Alabama, despite losing to Texas earlier this season, has found a way to keep their, their championship hopes alive. A way that would never have been possible dating back to, you know, it was just the BCS. There would have been no realistic way for him to get in with, with one loss already. Being at a four-team college football playoff in the SEC, they got a chance. Now, when it expands to 16 teams, you know, they'll probably still be in. But for this year, you still have a chance at four if you can beat Georgia. So who you got winning? Again, the full preview will be available later on this week on the channel, so make sure you are subscribed. But vote A for Alabama or G for Georgia. Sound off where else but the comment section.